Good morning. Welcome to St. Kilda's and St. Luke's Anglican Church in St. Thomas, Ontario. I'm Bishop Barry Clark, the pastor here at the parish, and we welcome you to this celebration, this Liturgy of the Word. And on this day, we light this candle as a reminder to celebrate with all our graduates this year, 2020. And the stole that I'm wearing is the rainbow. It's also June, uh, it's Pride Month. And so I wear this stole as a reminder of our inclusiveness, our solidarity with the LGBTQ uh, community. And so we pray together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The psalm appointed for this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, is Psalm 13. And the psalmist speaks in some ways to our present reality, our context, as we continue to adjust within the parameters of self-protection and isolation around the COVID-19. So the psalmist begins, How long will you forget me, Lord, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I be left to my own wits, agony filling my heart daily? How long will your enemy keep defeating me? Look at me, answer me, Lord my God. Restore sight to my eyes. Otherwise, I'll sleep the, the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I won. My foes will rejoice over my downfall, but I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Yes, I will sing to the Lord, because the Lord has been good to me. That psalm begins with a plea questioning God in the midst of the psalmist's agony. And as the psalmist prays through, he recognizes the presence of God, even in the midst of his distress and his agony and his suffering, to bring out that joy and that psalm of praise. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love one our neighbor as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus says, those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water 
to these little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. The Gospel of Christ. Today, celebrating the graduates of 2020, the academic year took a major shift when the World Health Organization in March announced that there was a coronavirus pandemic. The world went into shock, social distancing, isolation, testing, shutdowns, and many more critical changes to our way of life. Parents, teachers, school administrators, working with imagination, creativity, perseverance, integrity to keep the education of our children, young people, youth, and young adults learning. Thank you to all our educators. Your vocation is a blessing as you nurture life, as you instill wisdom and knowledge in our young people. Jesus is a teacher. And we see in the Gospel today that following a pattern of Jesus sending out his disciples, he now speaks to them in ways that remind them that even when they give a cup of water, a cup of water to the least of these, they will receive a reward. And Jesus is highlighting as teacher to his students that the self-offering to another human being is a powerful testimony of building life in community. Today's prayer for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost praise the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. This Judeo-Christian understanding is both ancient and present of the ways in which Jesus, the teacher, instills within his followers, his disciples, a way of living that provides life for the self and for the other. Now you may have heard this traditional African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. And today as I celebrate with you our graduates, I recognize that our educators, teachers, administrators, along with librarians and musicians and cafeteria staff, custodians and so on, all have a way in this educational environment to provide, we pray, always a safe place for learning. And we thank each one of these groups for their wonderful gift, their vocation. But this vocation is extended. It's extended, as I said in this wonderful proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Parents, grandparents, friends, aunts and uncles all create an opportunity to provide wisdom, a wi elder's wisdom to the next generation. And that too is part of the whole educational process. And today I'm also grateful for the many talented and gifted people in our community who continue, whether they're retired or not, to provide support and education to our young people, to nurture them in a way that builds them up with their own sense of worthiness and their sense of curiosity and imagination and creativity. So each step of the way, as students graduate from pre-K, from elementary school, from secondary school, college, university, 
we celebrate the ways in which all who have surrounded them on their journey, like those who surrounded me on my journey, for support, for challenge, for giving of themselves, so I might learn. We are grateful. The other expression that you may be familiar with, a proverb, is give a person a fish and you feed him or her for a day. Teach a person to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. And one of the things I remember in my graduation from university in theological education and religious studies, the professor said to us as we finished off our program, this is only the beginning of your learning. Your learning continues way in to the future as well, if you're open to the grace of learning, being inquisitive, searching, studying. So I'm too, I too am a student, because I love to read and search and learn, so that I too may grow in wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, there's this wonderful statement, train a child in the way she should go, even when she is old, she will not depart from it. That wisdom that we acquire through our lifetime. And then the proverb says, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. These wonderful short sayings are proverbs of wisdom of wisdom of those who have lived life and write about it. St. Paul, as we continue to celebrate our graduates, says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Nurturing of our minds, the nurturing of that thought pattern, that way of critical thinking, is what we're often called to do in times of stress and distress. And Jeremiah, that young prophet, hears these words from the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, isn't that what we're offering our graduates? May they be our grandchildren, our children, our nieces, our nephews, our friends, children, offering them that future with a hope. And we are part of making that future with hope in our generation, our experiences, our ability to connect and critically think and offer insight is important to each and every generation. Now there's Daniel in the book of Daniel. And it's written, as for these four youths, God gave them learning, and a skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had all understanding in all vision and dreams. You have heard me say once before, if not twice or three times, that probably the, the greatest minds that are being shaped and formed are, are, is in our young people. That mind that is open to curiosity, open to adventure, and somehow we instill some fear at times to prevent us from expanding our horizons. So there's youth, there's children, but there's educators, and we give thanks on this day. So let us pray. Today we rejoice and give thanks for the persistence and discipline that has led to the completion of academic work. We are thankful for minds and energy 
which are gifts of God that bring us to celebrate with our graduates. We give thanks for teacher and learner, for administrators and for encouragers that stretch our minds and deepen our understanding. We give thanks for knowledge gained through observation, research, experiment, through trial and error, until discovery enlightens a path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for educational adventures, for studies that lead to healing of body and calming of troubled and difficult minds, for those thoughts and concepts that lead to mending of relationships between combative and competitive nations, we pray to you, O Lord, to understanding between different races and social classes, and to reconciliation between spouses, parent, and children. We give you thanks, O Lord, for science that it helps us understand ourselves and the environment in which we live, and then free us to be good stewards of the universal resources for the wholeness and benefit of humankind. Let us pray to the Lord. For words enriched with meaning to enhance communication, for understanding of forces shaping our past, gained through history, literature, and philosophy, and the classical arts that give us sight to understand the present and the future. Let us pray to the Lord. For artistic training that has power to move the heart as well as the mind. For educators who give their lives to help others learn to overcome physical, emotional, economic, and social limitations, let us pray to the Lord. Bless all that has been learned by these graduates, and may their learning be the place that will bear fruit in their living not simply for their gain, but for the benefit of all people. As they have worked to gain knowledge, may each of us discipline ourselves to seek godly wisdom, remind us to seek first the kingdom of God, that all else may be given to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Grant that our understanding or our unending quest for knowledge and wisdom might not lead us to arrogance, intellectual idolatry, self-sufficiency, or false pride, but to be enriched by our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Give us confidence in the revelation of God through scripture, history, and our risen Lord, that motivates us to grasp understanding and all human illumination. Let us pray to the Lord. Bathe us in humility to know that in this world we will seek to balance our finite scale, knowledge and faith, that will be united fully only in the coming of your kingdom, when then we shall see fully that which we see only in part. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, 
in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And for our graduates and their families and educators and supporters and encouragers, a blessing. May God's blessing rest on each one of you. May God's light shine on you and make your path clear. May hope carry you through the challenging times. And may your life be filled with gratitude. May your days be filled with curiosity and adventure, and may you discover the incomparable joy of living lives that bring honor and glory to God. Amen. This week, birthdays. Happy birthday, Marjorie. Happy birthday, Judy. God be with you, support you, and love you. And for others who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, we extend greetings and prayers. To our graduates, Samuel, Riley, Will, others that I'm not familiar with at the moment, we extend happy graduation and your next step of adventure in education and learning, go forth and know that you journey in the company of people who love you and care for you and support you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.